Everyone is all up in arms about Russian meddling after the election of this guy. But if you looked at the media, you would think the US was just some innocent bystander. However, the US perhaps quite literally has some skeletons in their closet. They were very busy for well over a century intervening in Latin America, and of late, particularly in the affairs of Venezuela. It's no secret the US was behind the 2002 attempted coup against Hugo Chavez, a democratically elected leader whose agenda bucked Washington's plan for the region, and a series of Latin American states who also elected lefty leaders with progressive programs that formed a soft alliance with Chavez to lift up the region and oppose interference from the North. Why else would they tour former US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson to key Latin American countries? Since then, those right-wing states took bolder steps to isolate an already economically suffocated Venezuela. I mean, with elections on May 20th in Venezuela, which the US is in opposition of, I thought I'd take you down Latin American memory lane and give you a taste of what the US was up to in the other countries over the last century. 1898, the US occupies Cuba and takes Puerto Rico. 1903 to 1904, US encourages Panamanians to revolt against Colombia, declare its independence, and agree to build a canal connecting the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean for US military and commercial interests. Also, US President Teddy Roosevelt amends the infamous Monroe Doctrine to include intervention in the affairs of Latin American states. In 1913, during the Mexican Revolution, the US government helped plot the coup that murdered the first democratically elected president in 30 years, Francisco Madero. In these two decades, U.S. troops also intervened and occupied Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Honduras, Haiti, Nicaragua, Colombia, and Panama to protect the interests of U.S. corporations like United Fruit in the production of bananas, tobacco, and sugarcane. During this time, Haiti even saw the reintroduction of slave labor. And the U.S. also kept a contingent force in Nicaragua from 1912 to 1933. In the 1930s, cash trapped by the Great Depression, the U.S. instead turned to political subversion and influencing financial sectors in Latin America. And by 1936, the U.S. began to back up the military dictatorship of Anastasio Somoza in Nicaragua, a family that remained in power until the late 1970s. The 1940s brought about the Truman Doctrine to crush left-wing political movements in Latin America with the start of the Cold War. In 1948, Colombian presidential candidate Jorge Eliezer Gaitan, a highly popular left-wing leader intent on democratizing the economy and the political system, was assassinated in Bogotá with the help of the CIA. Democratically elected Guatemalan president, Jacobo Guzman was overthrown in 1954, ending the Guatemalan revolution that liberalized the country. United Fruit, there's that name again, lobbied the US government to intervene to protect their highly profitable business that was being affected by the revolution's land reforms. With the Cuban revolution in 1959, the 1960s brought about a series of US operations aimed at stopping the spread of socialist governments and populist leaders. Because Cuba formed an alliance with the USSR, and US corporate interests were one by one being nationalized by the revolution, they staged a failed invasion at the Bay of Pigs, also failing to murder Fidel Castro eight times between 1960 and 1965. In 1964, the US supports the military coup in Brazil. A year later, US soldiers invaded the Dominican Republic again to stop a left-wing resurgence. In the 1970s, the US backed the rise of military dictatorships in Bolivia, Uruguay, Peru, and Argentina. Most infamously, they orchestrated Chile's 1973 coup against democratically elected socialist Salvador Allende, which led to two decades of Augusto Pinochet's dictatorship, with tens of thousands disappeared and tortured, and the neoliberalization of their economy. The 80s saw U.S.-backed civil wars in El Salvador and Guatemala that led to thousands of deaths. In 1983, the U.S. invades Granada. The war on drugs leads to intervention in Colombia. The U.S. trains the Contras against the Sandinista Revolution in Nicaragua. In 1989, they invade Panama to secure an allied head of state and the economic blockade against Cuba intensifies conditions on the island with the collapse of the USSR. Having this historical memory is crucial for us, especially as Latin Americans, in order to have a healthy perspective on the US government's disinterest in the welfare of people and their total interest in controlling the continent's development and resources for the sake of their own profits. We're working hard here at Telesur to bring you content that is critical, fun, and well-made. If you like these videos, share them. And if you agree or disagree, leave us your comments. And make sure to follow our new video content page, Telesur Play. I'm Adriano Contreras. Later.